In this presentation, we're going to go over the limit order book and take a look at a few interactive applications that I put together to allow you to interact with the limit order book. So a limit order book is the means by which you'll interact with uh, stock markets, option markets, futures markets, um, anything you trade is going to be um, you, you're going to interact with the limit order book. There are a future, you know, a few things, treasury auctions and so forth that 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 uh, that, uh, that don't use limit order books. But the vast majority of anything you trade is going to be in a limit order book. I'm going to move through the presentation rather quickly, hitting the major points. You can go through and and read it for some of the more minor points. But uh, the first thing we're going to look at is just what an order book looks like. So so and what it's saying. So here this is a limit order book. This is just going to uh, this is just a graphical representation of the limit order book. But what this is saying is we have our asks or offers here and we have our bids here. So uh what what this is saying is there's a 400 shares available to buy at 11:38. So these are people willing to sell 400 shares at 11:38 and this gives us the option if we would like to buy these shares at 11:38. So alternatively there we can sell 2,700 shares at 11.36. Right. So these are prices. The asks are, are are sell orders that people are posting, which gives us the option to buy at those orders. So we so we buy here at these asks and we sell at these bids. Right. And we can put in bids and we can put in asks. But but um, but these are the side we buy. This is the price we sell. The 11.38 and 11.36 here are the inside quotes. This is what is known as the best bid and best offer. The best bid meaning the highest price at which we can sell and the lowest price at which we can buy. Those are the inside quotes. So you can read through this example. Uh, we talked about the inside quotes. I'm going to sort of fast forward to the to the uh, to the interactive application. But before I do, one th quick thing to say is we have a the the bid ask spread. This is a transaction cost to the market maker. So when you trade, often people think, well, commissions are my transaction costs. You have commissions like, uh, um, that your broker may charge, but you're also paying the, the bid-ask spread. This is why if you were to trade randomly, right, uh, let me fast forward here so we can look at an order book while, while I'm talking. Um, uh, this is a little far. I should have. So I'll reload this while I'm talking. So you might be able to see it's um, so if you were to buy and if you were to sell, right, if you were to just repeatedly buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, uh, you're going to lose two cents every time. You're going to buy 11.38, sell 11.36, buy 11. So this is a very important component of the transaction cost in, in a market. So you you have a commissions to a broker, but you're also paying a, a, the bid ask spread to the, to the market maker. And this, the more shares you trade, the larger component, the bid ask spread is, is going to be to your transaction costs. Going back a little bit, hitting one or two more points before we jump into market orders. So we talked about this. Another important point, which I'm going to talk about as we as we look at order books, is the idea of liquidity. You know, market depth, or or what we term liquidity in in an order book here is is the amount which we can buy or sell without pushing the price. You might remember liquidity just as a general term in finance, um, the the ability to sell something w quickly without without dropping its price, right? In, in an order book setting, you know, we define liquidity as is is the the ability to buy or sell without pushing the price much, right? Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at um, how our orders uh, affect the liquidity of the uh, of the order book, uh, because generally there's different fees, make or taker fees, depending on whether you're taking away or adding liquidity to the market. So first thing we'll do here is look at a market order and look at its effect on the order book. We have market buy and market sell. So what this order is doing is saying, okay, well, transact immediately, right? So if, if I, so what we have here is this is the order book before our order hits, and this is the order book assuming that when our order hits, nothing has changed. So, so this order book is, is uh, includes the effect of our order here and nothing else, right? Uh, so let's say this is the order book, right? And we submitted a market buy order for a hundred shares. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy uh, 100 of these shares at 11.38. So now you see 11.38 with 300. It was, there was 400 available 
uh, to purchase here. Now there's only 300 because we took that 100, right? So what this is showing you right off the bat is market orders take liquidity away from the market. So generally, if you submit market orders, um, you are, well, you're termed a taker, as in taking liquidity, and your fees are a little bit higher. Uh, you can look at this on different exchanges. I think the, the fees, uh, I was looking at Coinbase for the lowest um, amount trading category, but the, the maker, uh, the taker fees were 0.6, and, and the maker fees are going to be lower at 0.4. But so what we can see is there's less liquidity in the order book after our order goes through. Similarly, we could say sell, right? Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to sell against this 2,700 available to buy, you know, to sell against at 1136. These are limit buy orders. Um, we'll, we should talk about that in a second. But so what you see is we've we've taken that liquidity away, right? So we immediately sell 100 shares um, uh, at the the best available price. So when you submit a, a market order, it executes at the best available price, which is the inside quotes when your order hits the market. That's why when we bought, we hit these this 400, and when we're selling, we're, you know, we're hitting the inside quote down here at this 2700. So after, so market sell 100 shares, right? Uh, we sell 100 shares at 1136, and now there is only 2600 uh, available at this best bid. So again, we've taken liquidity away from the market. A couple notes to say here. Uh, what a market order provides us, like why would you submit a market order? Well, we're guaranteed to buy or sell. Right? So we'll see later in some price contingent orders, you may not buy or sell. But I know if I, if I put in 100 market sell, I will sell. I don't know the price, but I know I'll sell. Similarly, if I say, you know, buy a 1,000 shares, Right after I will I will own a thousand shares right um, guaranteed. So when do you not use market orders? Well, particularly if you're going to buy a lot of shares, right? You don't want to use market orders because you're going to start pushing the book. No, I've bought everything, so now 11:38. You know, so I've I've bought all the way. I move the book to 11:43. So what this does is it buy it buys. It says give me the best price available at the market, but. But whatever it is, buy it. I don't care. Buy it, right? So this can be particularly dangerous when the market is crashing, right? It's very volatile and, and the market's declining fast because all of a sudden these orders here, on the, particularly on the bid side, might be gone. So if you try to sell 10,000 shares into this book, if it's not a market crash, again, you push the price all the way down to 11.29. But what may happen is, is is these before your order gets to the exchange these orders are gone uh, you may not remember there's a flash crash it's you know like over a decade ago now but um, what happened is some people put you know the, some stocks were 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 declining very rapidly within seconds you know they were going from like 60 and and they went down and, and transactions went through at like a penny because what happened is people submitted market orders all the, you know before the order hit the exchange, all these were gone, and they just hit um, orders way down in the order book. One thing I should mention is this is showing the order book five levels deep. I, the order book can go many levels deep. If I get NYMEX data, I'm usually getting 10 levels deep, but the idea here is when the market was crashing, a lot of market makers canceled their buy orders, you know, let's say at 11.36, and just put a buy, because they have to have an order in the market, they put a buy order in at like 10 cents. Right, this is called stub quoting. It's frowned upon. Market makers shouldn't do it, but that's not to say it can't happen. So, people put in market sell orders, and they hit that ten cent order. Right. So what you saw was stocks in the flash crash go from you know eleven dollars to ten cents, back up to eleven dollars. So what you want to do is, if there's any sort of market volatility, don't use a market order. Right. Because you're not you're you're just going to transact but you're not controlling the price at which you're going to transact and if that price is moving very fast you can transact at a very bad price that's also to say if you start using market orders for large amount of shares high frequency traders may notice that you're just selling into the order book right and then they're going to adjust their prices very quickly so they see okay you you know you've cleared out the order book here you cleared out the order book here you cleared it out here then they are going to react and, and say, okay, well, um, I'm going to cancel these orders and put in orders much lower to see if you'll, you'll go ahead and hit them. So generally, don't use market orders in volatile markets and in, and in um, 
for large orders and and what I'll show you here is really you never have to use market orders you can use limit orders in a way that um, that will mean that you don't have to really use market orders but again the benefit of them is you will transact you just don't know the price okay so the next order we're going to look at is a limit order you can kind of read through this I'm gonna I'm gonna go through some examples here uh, of, of limit orders the first thing that we're going to notice is what what this order is saying is uh, here is we have a limit buy right so it's saying buy 100 shares at no higher than 1136 right at no higher than 1136 so note the the lowest offer here is 1130 these are offers to sell right uh, so our this order isn't going to transact right it's going to sit in the order book so what we're going to say is okay there was 2700 shares that, that wanted to be purchased at 1136 once we enter order now there's 2800 that are um, that you know would like to be purchased at, at at 1136 which is equivalently available to be sold against right so what we've done here is we've added liquidity to the market right so in this case in the maker taker fee structure we're a maker we have added liquidity to the market and so generally the fees on this type of order are lower right because they they add to the depth of the book. Exchanges want the book to be uh, deep and liquid. So, uh, yeah, so I mean, so we can add, you know, if I say 1135, you're going to see that, well, now this is added here, right? So we can add our order to anywhere in the book. And we can actually become the inside quote if we would like, right? So here, again, our order is still not going to transact, but now we are um, the best bid at 1137 so if, if a market sell order comes in here then they're going to transact against us first I should mention let's say we go back to 1138 so now sorry let's let's go to 1136 2700 uh, now we've increased that um, the, the bids here to 2800 note if a, a market sell order for 100 shares comes in here we're not going to transact because this is how do you rank all the bids in here? Because this is many bids. These are this is the aggregation of all the people wanting to buy. So it's first in, first out. So the first person that put a a, a bid at this level is going to transact against the first hundred shares. So we would transact against the last hundred shares that are that are bought because we were the last in, right? So so it's first in, first out. Okay. Now, of course, I can switch this to a to a sell. Like, so, if I say 11:39, and, and I switch this to a sell, you're going to see that we're adding to the order book here at 11:39. And we again, we could we could become the best offer, the inside quote here, 11:37. No, uh, yeah. So we're we're the best offer here. So if someone were to submit a market buy, we would they would transact against us. Now I mentioned you can use these instead of market orders. So the idea is how. Well, let's say I want to. We'll go back to I want to buy, but I don't want to buy any higher than 11.40, right? So we can go in here and we could say, okay, well, limit buy at 11.40, and what you're going to see here is we automatically transact. So we've bought now, right? So. Uh, because what this is saying is buy no higher than 11.40, so this is saying well you could buy at 11.38, so we bought that 100 shares at 11.38. We've we've taken liquidity out of the market. So what this does is it it, it triggers the order, and then when the order is triggered, it's it gives you the best available price. So in other words, if I put 11.40, it's not going to transact at 11.40. It's going to give me the best available price in the market, which is 11.38. That's important. It's a sensible rule, but it's also important so I can't manipulate markets. If, if you allow me to do that, to transact at whatever price I want above the, the best offer, I could hit 20, right? And what? And assuming, let's say, it, I could actually transact at 20, there's things called stop orders, which I'll go in, but I could immediately change the price at 20 and trigger a lot of orders so I can manipulate markets. So, um, you know, you never put 20, but it's going to give you the best available offer. So going back to something sensible like uh, 1140 right so let's say you wanted to buy at 1138 right but you wanted to buy no higher than 1140 so you, you want to buy you don't want to stick an order in the order book um, you can do this and it'll act like a market order but it'll act like a market order with the benefit that let's say I'm selling here and I want to sell I'll say oh, well I'll sell no lower than 1130 so 
I'm going to sell 100 shares at, at 1136, assuming the order book hasn't changed. But if all of a sudden we're like in a flash crash situation where the price drops to like $5 really quickly, I'm not going to transact. Then I will sit in the order book as a limit sell, like as an ask here at 1130. So this allows you to transact immediately while still controlling the price a bit. So, so you know what limit orders do, right? Um, generally, we would say these are these are these are price contingent orders, and the the downside of a limit order is you're not guaranteed to transact. So, important to keep in mind. Let if I put this at eleven, let's say I put this at eleven thirty-two, right? So hundred eleven thirty-two. There's my hundred shares, right? This may never actually hit. I may never buy it. Right, the, the the price may go up, and and my order just sits in the order book. You know, usually it's a day order or a good till cancel, but it can it can sit there until it's canceled. I never transact. So the downside of a limit order is, well, you may never transact. That said, you can use a limit order in a way that you're pretty likely to transact, and it controls that you won't buy too high if the order book rapidly changes. So often, you know, most orders I put in are limit orders, even if I want to buy at market. I'll put in a limit order and just say, okay, 11.39, and, and I'll buy, but it controls my price a little bit. Good. So limit orders add liquidity, uh, you can, can, uh, um, generally, uh, and, and you can control your price. But also, last thing I'll say here, of, of course, as you figured out, the market maker is just, when you're putting in limit orders, you're acting like a market maker, right? So you can you can try to make markets by by putting in these limit orders. The difference between you and a registered market maker is a market maker always has to po post these limit orders. Limit uh, buys and limit sells. Excellent. Last note I'll say here, this is a little bit more theoretical, but if you if you want a value, so this, these limit orders provide liquidity to the market, and a lot of people have gone in and tried to, to value these limit orders using option pricing uh, methodology. So what you can think of a limit order here is, let's say I say limit sell at 1140, right? So there my there's my order in the order book, uh, my limit sell. So what this what you can think of this is I'm giving the option I'm I'm writing a call option so at with a strike price of 1140. So I'm giving somebody else the right to buy it at the stock at 1140. It's a very, very short dated option because I can cancel it at any time. But uh, so the option has very, very little option value. But you can go and start to think of what is the value of me placing a limit order. And you can start to, to value this using you know all the machinery of, of option pricing. So that's a sort of interesting, kind of an interesting area for research. Great. So if you get a chance, go in and interact with this you know the way I'd recommend if you're if you're getting used to order books is put an order in here and think about you know what will happen um, try to predict it and then go look to see if you're right here uh, so if you get a chance go in and, and, and interact with these and otherwise have a great day